understanding swell. It's like understanding like chupacabras. It's like we know it exists. Can you really be exact about it? No, for real. There is science with swell. There is science with surfing. And there is a ton. There is a ton to read. There is a ton to research. Today, I'm just going to tell you guys one thing that I consider every time I go surf. If you guys are new to this channel, this video is a vlog and I'm doing 90 of them daily vlogs that drop at 8 a.m. every day where I either surf, bike, and snowboard one hour a day, one hour in the gym, and one cold plunge every single day. And I'm going to get into that later. But first, one of the factors that I always read before I go surf and decide on which spot I'm going to choose. We got the two main ones, wave height and tide. And those things are major factors. But another thing that can be confusing is swell period. As you can see on Surfline, they always have 10 seconds, 14 seconds, 15 seconds, 16 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. And what that is, is very important. That is the time measured between the crest of each wave that passes a buoy. So we have buoys all across coast California, all over the world that measure swell height. And as that wave crosses by that buoy, it measures the distance between. To create waves, it needs to be in between four seconds and 22 seconds. 22 seconds is nuts. That's a code red swell. So the longer period swells are much, much more powerful. So when you're gonna go surf, when you're thinking of like, what are the waves gonna be like? Sometimes it's not always best to check wave height. Sometimes it's best to check the swell period and that can actually yield the best results. The ocean is crazy and even Surfline gets it wrong quite often. So this is not a guaranteed metric. It is as close as you can get to like understanding the waves. I think it's a really good idea to not only read the swell period, but the direction of the swell for your surf spot, which will eventually score you the best waves. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case today. Ooh, what happened? Classic situation. Drive about 45 minutes north, hunting down some waves. And there are a couple out here. I just, I'm not seeing anything that I'm like super psyched on. And I don't think it's getting any better. I think it's really just getting worse. Actually, I know it's getting worse. Uh, so this is, uh, this is what we did. Santa Cruz tour, uh, hunting waves. So we're gonna go back to town. Okay, we drove up and down the coast looking for just like the absolute best wave. And none of them were like that great because Josefina's here filming. So I definitely wanted to get the best of the best but we ended up coming right back into town and um, there just isn't that many like insane waves. Like I wanted to get some like barrels and some airs and like progressive maneuvers, but um, it's not gonna happen, which is fine. I'm still psyched and it's small, but it's, there's no one out. So the tide is going down, winds are shifting in my favor and hopefully we can get a couple of like sick ones for sure. Josefina, what do you think? I think that this is always what happens when we can film together. We drove all over Santa Cruz and end up filming and surfing on the same spot. It's always the same. We would have gone to the lane because it's better, but there's competition going on, so there's a lot of people there. Right? Yeah. But it's nice. It's sunny. Peter and I are staying in Santa Cruz. I'm excited. Without doubt, every time Josefina is able to film, the waves disappear like clockwork. It's crazy. All week leading up to today, sick waves. Tomorrow, sick waves. Today is the only lull in between swells. The only day she has off in a seven day period. Insanity. I'm cold plunging and it's daytime. That's awesome. Uh, psyched on that. 
And we got the gym in today. Me and Josefina got absolutely after it. What about? It's growing that young. How was that workout? Awesome. Nice. Oh, can you see my muscles? Yeah. But I definitely think I could have done the 20 pound dumbbell more the 15. It felt pretty light. Yeah. That workout was sick. Uh, like I've always said, dude, CrossFit will just get you fit. You just do a little bit of that and dude. Surf session didn't really go as planned, but that's surfing, you know. Uh, still super stoked to get in the water. I mean, this is day 39. I've gotten tons and tons of surf sessions. I think the the thing that is like super, you know, difficult, it might have been our first time in this entire challenge that like we've been able to film surf, which is like super sick because the surf clips always turn out super fun. And it's like how I can progress is watching myself surf. Like the GoPro just doesn't do it justice. And to make great content for you guys to watch, it's way sicker to have somebody filming on the beach than just like watching POV clips. So I'm always trying to produce the best content and just like getting the best waves. But you know what? If you guys like and subscribe, you know, keep doing that. And pretty soon this channel is gonna get monetized. We got like 50 subscribers left before we hit a thousand and then we can start having Josefina come out and film all the time. Just having more time to film because we're working six days. A she works six days a week. It's crazy. And I work five, you know, and sometimes I work six. Sometimes I work seven. 90 day challenge. Let's get this cold plunge in, get this vlog edited, and we'll see what we do tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Cold plunge number 39, done. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully we can get some more surf clips, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow.